Hey, what's going on, Summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today I'll be walking you through this week's weekly news update. There's a lot of great things that have been recently announced, including the new Sona rework. Whether it's the new Crime City skins, item changes, crazy reworks, or even the smallest of changes overall, here at Pro Guides, we've got you covered. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned to the end so you don't miss out on any important updates now and in the future. This wouldn't be a weekly news update if we didn't start off with everybody's favorite part, the new skins. There are actually two new skin lines being released here soon, and they look pretty amazing. Starting us off, we got the new Crime City Nightmare skin line. Similar to the Crime City that we all know and love, this new skin line theme features darker colors and ghoulish effects and overall gives a cool vibe that mixes Blood Moon and Crime City into one coherent line. Joining this new line, we've got Akali, Darius, Shaco, Twisted Fate, and Zyra. These new skins feature new visual effects, SFX, models, textures, and of course, a new recall animation. From the looks of it, all of these Crime City Nightmare skins are going to be 1350 RP, so your wallets are safe for now. Unless you're going to buy these skins, then they're probably not. These will each come with 9 chromos so you can further customize your champion to match you better. It does not stop there either. Each Crime City Nightmare champion is going to be getting their own icon as well as an exclusive event icon chroma. Finally, while this doesn't have to really do with the Nightmare portion, it does seem that Crime City Graves is having his splash art updated as well. But before we dive further into our next skin line and PvE changes, don't forget to check us out at ProGuides.com where you can view our great catalog of coaches that can personally create a walkthrough to your dream rank. While you're there, be sure to explore around and take a look at our amazing subscription service so you can go ahead and watch exclusive videos by CoreJJ, Xmithy, and more. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and dive right into the new skin line. Now that we've covered the Crime City Nightmare line, let's take a look at yet another new skin line that's being worked on. While this one doesn't really have a title, we'll be just calling it the Phoenix skin line as they all share the same theme. Joining the Phoenix skin line, we've got Anivia, Seraphine, and Zaya. As with the Crime City Nightmare line, these will feature new visual effects, sound effects, models, textures, and a brand new recall. Each of these skins boasts a bright and fairly vibrant color scheme that plays around the Phoenix theme. As of now, these Phoenix skins will only feature 8 chromas, but that's still quite a few customization options. It's unclear at the moment, but it's safe to assume that all three of these new skins will cost 1350 RP. Alongside these skins, there are going to be two new icons and two new emotes featuring the Phoenix Anivia and Full Moon Ari. Finally, drawing us at the end of our skin line, we've got a Phoenix Ward skin as well. Now that we've covered all the new skin lines, it's time to take a look at the new PPE balance changes. While we won't go super in-depth on these changes, we're going to be focusing on the major changes going on. First, let's take a look at Gangplank's changes, which seems to have a lot of GP mains pretty excited. His passive is getting nerfed by having its movement speed changed from a flat 30% to a scaling 15-30% to by level. GP's Q is going to be changed so that now it counts as a ranged basic attack, which will now influence a few things such as Tiamat and Grasp of the Undying. Now his biggest changes are going to be with his barrels. They will now benefit from crit strike at 125% effectiveness and alongside this, GP will now have the ability to have a total of 5 barrels. To compensate for the extra barrels that he can carry, their recharge time is being increased by 4 seconds at max rank. This will overall boost GP's damage in the late game and will allow him to have far more playmaking potential. Now we've got Viego who Riot feels needs to lose a little bit of power within his resets and tank oriented builds, or maybe a lot of power. He's having his auto attack range and the healing on his passive reduced. As for his Q, his crit multiplier has been increased by 25% and his E is now going to have his camo reveal radius increased by 50, so it's going to be easier to spot Viego. But to be honest, I didn't even know that his Q could crit. Anyway, with these changes, Viego will have to be far more decisive with his possessions and you'll have to opt for items like Kraken Slayer rather than Divine Sunderer. Up next, we'll be taking a look at Lucian, which Riot is hoping to remove some of his mid-game power as they ramp up his bot lane win rate. Lucian is going to be getting a new passive where when his allies buff him, his next 2-5 basic attacks will deal additional magic damage. As for his ultimate, its damage is being slightly reduced, but that's not the big change. The massive change for Lucian is that the number of shots that he has is going to be significantly reduced as it no longer scales from 22 shots to 34. It will now be a flat 22 at all ranks, but in exchange, it will now scale with 25% crit chance. This means if you itemize crit, you'll have more bullets and of course more damage. However, you'll also have less ult damage around the mid game. Last but certainly not least, we've got Rengar's mini update. He's going to have his max ferocity stacks on his passive lowered from 4 to 3, and the empowered cast movement speed duration is being doubled. As for his Bone Tooth Forgiveness timer, it's also going to be doubled, which is going to help him with those pesky situations where you only get an assist. His W will now offer armor and magic resistance depending on each champion and large monster hit. However, its empowered variant will still heal like normal. Finally, Rengar's E will no longer have a cast time when leaping and will now reveal enemies for 2 seconds, which isn't an amazing overall buff, but it's a pretty nice quality of life change. Before we continue on with today's video, don't think for a second that we have forgotten about everybody's favorite pro grad tradition. For our question of the day, we want to know, what champion are you tired of seeing in your games and why? Personally, I'm pretty tired of seeing Irelia in nearly every single game I play. 
Let us know your answers in the comment section down below, and nonetheless, let's get back into the video. Now, we all know how vital items are to the game. Well, it seems that a lot of controversy has risen over the past few weeks regarding the current state of items. And if we're getting specific, it's the current state of Mage Atomization and Divine Sunderer. Let's go ahead and start off by taking a look at the issues being pointed out about Mage Atomization at this point. For starters, there is a large lack of itemization diversity when it comes to mages. Compared to the other roles, they simply can't make strategic item choices and tend to be locked into certain item orders. It's extremely cookie cutter as mages pick up a mythic, which tends to be the strongest one in the meta, then they gravitate towards Zhanya's before ending up with a Void Staff or Rabidon's. If you're really lucky, you can look to build Horizon Focus, but at the end of the day, it's just more damage. The issue with this is not only the lack of strategic choices, which we remind you was the point of the item rework this season, but also the fact that mage items tend to offer simply more damage and nothing else. A great equivalent would be something like Gunblade that offered burst and sustain with an active, or something like Deathfire Grasp that would let you shred a single target, though I don't really like this item, you know. It is more diverse. It's items like this that not only allow for more build diversity, but also makes the game feel more alive. The most situational item that mages have at the moment is Horizon Focus if you have CC or Long Range, Cosmic Drive for Ability Spam, or Rallies for Slows, and even then, a lot of people would prefer a different item. As for Divine Sunderer, the community is fairly outraged at the fact that it still remains to be such a powerful item. The worst of it is that it seems like the state of the top lane at the moment is to pick up champions that can use the strongest mythic at that time. Whether it's the old Stripebreaker, the old Gore Drinker, or the current Divine Sunderer. With Sunderer being such a key item in the game, Marksmen and Bruisers alike are not only reaping the rewards of his extreme tank strat, but also get the great tank stats and healing as well. Many people want the item removed, but realistically, the community as a whole agrees that it should just instead be readjusted to either offer some help versus tanks, or maybe have worse stats, or maybe could just do the opposite. At the moment, it's in a strange spot where it's able to dish out high amounts of damage to tanks and squishies alike. Let's just see how long the Divine Sunderer Festival reigns supreme. Speaking of a few controversial opinions, recently it's come to the light that many players dislike the fact that manaless champions exist. To clarify, this doesn't include champions like Vladimir or Mundo that technically use HP as a resource, although they're not completely excluded either. Instead, this is talking about champions like Riven, Yasuo, Yone, Viego, and etc. These champions not only offer extremely versatile kits, but they also don't have to manage any kind of resource. Not only does this offer a great advantage in lane, but more often than not, these champions also have kits that provide both damage and protection. And we all know how important protection is. It seems that everybody has agreed that these champions should be balanced around the framework that if you lack a resource pool, then your cooldown should be lengthier as a sacrifice. With this issue being brought up, it was also brought into light that manaless champions get to lane significantly faster over the course of the game. This is because, especially for mages or caster marksmen, it takes extremely long for mana to regenerate in the fountain. More often than not, you have full health and you need to wait for the mana to catch up. A few criticize that the difference has no impact, but many say that there shouldn't be a difference at all. Before we continue on, if you want to join an amazing community of people that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and join. Nonetheless, let's get back to the video and take a look at how successful the new Sonar rework has been. Was it a success? As we draw closer to the end of the video, we want to talk about the success surrounding the Sonar rework. If you were with us for the last news update, you know that the new Sona rework was seemingly powerful and would amp up both her play rate and her win rate. Well, it was correct, and she's actually pretty strong right now. Her play rate has nearly doubled, and her win rate has hit a whopping 53% in Platinum Plus. While we wouldn't label her as OP yet, be sure to keep your eye on her and feel free to drop a few games practicing her if you like enchanters. Alongside her high strength, Riot isn't really looking to nerf her next patch either, as they want to collect more feedback and data before moving forward, so enjoy her while you can. If you've logged on to your league client within the past week or so, we've hoped that you've noticed a new icon on your top right. Riot has released their new friends list leaderboard to live servers, and it's gotten pretty mixed reviews. In terms of functionality, it does what it's supposed to do, and it does it well. You get a seamless organized leaderboard of all your friends and their ranks. That being said, a lot of people feel like it was rather unnecessary and a waste of time and resources. However, this work was done by an intern, and thus, many are saying it's not a waste at all, because, you know, apparently we don't care about interns. Regardless, it's a feature that is now kind of there, and you just could enjoy it or not. Before we close out our video, to make sure that you're all informed on your next solo queue match, let's quickly do a patch rundown. As we all know, Sona and Karma's mini reworks are now live. Alongside this, Diana Jungle just got a decent nerf with their passive now dealing 50% less damage to epic monsters. One major buff to be aware of is J4. His AD scaling on his ultimate is going up by a massive 40%, which will in turn result in a lot of damage. Alongside this, his passive will now deal 10% of the target's current health rather than 6%. 
Finally, ending off our important highlights, we've got Nunu, who's having his EAP ratio significantly increased. For all of you AP Nunu fanatics out there, this is your patch to shine. And that sums up our video for today, and thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Anyway, with all that being said, as usual, I hope you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.